the Infragistics ASP.NET web schedule suite of controls that comes with NetAdvantage for ASP.NET allows you to build out a resource management type of application very similar to Outlook and all the views found within Outlook. So in this full page example that I have here, you notice that there's various controls that work together in order to create this experience. So first of all, I'll talk a little bit about the visual controls that we see. So the controls that we see right here are essentially the web calendar view. This is right here, this control. Web calendar view is essentially used for navigation. Notice that as I click on any one of these dates, that all the other controls are synchronized as well. That's a functionality that I'll talk about a little in a moment after I introduce the UI controls. And what we have here is the web week view control where you get a week's worth of data. You get to see each individual appointment in here as well. And as I move down, you get to see the web day view. So the web day view essentially shows one day's worth of data, or if you want, you could show several columns, which then it ends up showing a couple of days worth of data. Th there's several columns that you could show, so each column represents one day. And again, you get the more detailed list of the appointments here. And then I also have the month view right here. This is a month's worth of data, where you can see all the data spread out throughout a month. So what's going on here is that all these controls are synchronized together through functionality of a component that is called the web schedule info. The web schedule info could be thought of as a component that ties together everything where all of the business objects that represent appointments and owners and other types of entities that are used by web schedule are used and shared throughout all the UI controls that are tied with it. And now the data access layer, if you want to think of it that way, can be handled by three other components that hook up to the web schedule info component. You can choose between web schedule OLEDB provider where you could point it directly to your OLEDB type of data. So if you have, let's say, access database or any other type of OLEDB database, like something like Sybase or whatever, where you have your database stored, you can use the OLEDB provider in version of web schedule uh, provider. Um, if you have SQL Server, like Microsoft SQL Server, you can use the Web Schedule SQL Provider. Um, you could, uh, you know, point it to that. You, know, you could point, it, you could use that one to point to that version of the um, of your database. But also, there may be times where you have just business objects or other types of backends, or you might have like intermediate, like middle tier business objects of some kind, or something that might come from like a web service and it's processed somehow then you could always use our web schedule generic data provider so that one allows you to hook up to anything and then it's up to you to programmatically wire up your business objects and their properties with the requirements of our business objects and the infragistics properties from the business objects that work with web schedule so you have several choices we actually give you out of the box we give you a blank Microsoft Access database for a smaller scale application where it's just empty and it's got this schema and you could just use that one or you can also go with the if you have SQL Server we also give you a Microsoft SQL Server script that you fire it off and it creates all the tables, stored procedures and, and everything triggers and all that stuff relations in your Microsoft SQL Server and then you could use a SQL data provider in that case so if you don't have a database but if you have existing data and you want to fit it into your if you want to fit it into the um, web schedule then you can use the generic data provider for that so a couple of things about the UI so these controls are all integrated together they're all connected through the web schedule info and let's say if I double click on one of these guys here you're going to notice that I get the dialog form so here we have dialogs that are included with the controls as well. So once you install the Infragistics NetAdvantage ASP.NET product, uh, one of the folders that is created in the program files wherever this is installed is a folder that contains all the ASPX web forms. So you can you have to deploy the web forms along with your application and you could do that in such a way where if you have 20 apps on your web server they could all use the same instance of these forms or you can do with a lot of other, what a lot of other people do they include a local copy of those forms within each application so you could do that as well so if you ever wanted to update one web application you don't have to worry about you know having to do it across the entire board 
you just do one at a time. It's a little bit more scalable that way, or more flexible for upgrading and deployments. And this dialog box that just popped up is because it's a recurring appointment, so I could open up this instance right here, this particular instance, and yet another dialog pops up, which is the actual appointment editor. So you can do s all sorts of things like print, delete, you know, give it a priority, um, you know, set it low priority, high priority. You could set this up as an all day event, and you could, uh, you know, set the date and time, just like you would with any other type of appointment that you've seen out there. You could also update these values by just dragging the appointments and I could extend the duration by dragging and dropping. Whenever I do this, an AJAX request is going on behind the scenes and updating the back end. So that's how, that's, that's, that's how this is designed. So end users could drag and drop appointments, readjust start and end times, and you're the provider behind the scenes to take care of all of this. And this is based on end users. So right now the, the default user is the unassigned user. And the way it works is that you can, um, whatever, what you do is you could essentially programmatically take users from a user table that you might have, or we call them owners, and you set that as the active owner within the um, web schedule info object. And what happens is all the data that is required for that one owner is fetched automatically once the appointments are loaded. And then whenever the page loads, we see appointments only for that one person. So notice that this person doesn't have anything scheduled. If I just go back to the unassigned owner, which is the default owner, if you just drag and drop all these controls and components that I'm talking about onto your web application and hook up to the default database that I talked about, and you don't set up anything related to owners, and if you start adding appointments, they will all be assigned to the unassigned owner, which is a default owner, because every appointment must have an owner of some kind. So there's a bunch of other things that you can do with web schedule. You can cause appointments to span across multiple days. It'll be like a continuous bar. You can creatively show multiple owners on the web form in many different ways. And again, a lot of people use this in different ways. Like the majority of customers out there use this as a type of resource scheduling type of application or functionality within their existing app. However, there's been customers that, that will use this to kind of give a, a schedule-like view to process or some kind of process automation, like where they want to add a process here, you know, they'll double click in a blank spot here, just like I did, and they'll, it'll fire up a blank appointment. So. And then they'll, what happens is there's a specific arrangement that they have where something in the subject that they that their end users type in will, you know, be read from another process from another part of their application and fire off um, a job of some kind. So that's, that's there's many different ways that people have used this in the past. So so it's very flexible in that aspect. Then you save it. And the same thing goes with, let's say if I were to double click on this appointment I just created, and if I click on the recurrences button, I'm able to configure the recurrence pattern, which gets stored in the back end as a recurrence pattern, and start time, end date, uh, end time, daily, weekly, monthly. So you get all the typical recurrence options that you'd expect from any kind of scheduling application. So anytime you want to include this type of functionality in your app, definitely check out Web Schedule. It's really great to work with and there's a lot of flexibility involved and lots of customization. And again, you even have the ability to get these pop-ups that show up to remind you and then you could open items, dismiss them, snooze, so all the snooze options that you see here. So hope you enjoy this. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.